Welcome to everyone in Steelers Nation. I'm Stan Saverin, and it's our great pleasure to welcome in Steelers Hall of Famer, Rod Woodson. Rod, welcome. Good to see you. Good seeing you. I would imagine that any rookie who's drafted or even an undrafted rookie feels pressure to, first of all, make the team. Uh, that's not necessarily the case with number one draft picks as you were. However, was there a different kind of pressure in that you were expected to come in and contribute right away? I was, uh, but I held out until October 28th. <laughs> so, uh, you know, we were trying to figure out the number, the deal. Um, we really couldn't come to the do dollar agreement uh, that we, you know, that I would, I expected. I thought I was going to go a little bit higher in the draft. Uh, I slipped down, which I'm glad I did slip down to, uh, you know, to 10th overall. And it didn't go fourth or fifth. I would have been in Cleveland somewhere. Man, I would have been miserable. But, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, just trying to figure that out. Uh, and then, you know, the one thing that my agent told me is like, you know, just believe in who you are, make your stand, believe in it. And, you know, luckily for me, you know, I wasn't idle. I was running track. So I went over to Europe and ran over there for – uh, several months, which had a gorgeous time over there, going to Nice, France, and all that stuff. Being a 21-year-old knucklehead kid from Indiana and Purdue, going over there. Uh, but then, you know, I finally came back, and we, we reached an agreement, um, and I got to come in then, October 28th, um, and uh, that's when the pressure kind of hit, right? Like you're like, okay, Thomas Everett, you know, you know, he was the same classmate. I knew who Thomas was because he was the first Jim Thorpe Award winner uh, from in the collegiate ranks. Uh, you know, he went to Baylor. I knew Delton Hall. You know, we, we were at our mini camps together. Um, so I knew those guys were already playing. So me coming in, being late, you know, trying to figure out, like, how am I going to get on the field? How can I contribute to the team? Uh, you know, and luckily for me, you know, Chuck was patient. Uh, I had a great coach in Tony Dungy, um, and I, I worked my way through. Working your way through, uh, was it uh, a great benefit that you were able to return kicks as a way to uh, immediately, uh, you know, contribute until you learned the nuances of the defense? Yeah, returning, you know, the kickoff returns. Uh, we had Louie doing the punt returns because Louie had great hands. Um, but luckily I was fast. You know, I was fast and I had decent vision for a kickoff <laughs> returner, especially playing defense for the most part. Um, you know, so it, got, it gave me an opportunity to step onto the field and to contribute to the team in, in a positive sense, hopefully. When you think about being drafted number one, there were a number of picks before you. Um, a couple teams made unexpected picks, which allowed yeah, yeah. you to fall to the Steelers. Uh, Chuck Knoll, who wasn't terribly effusive, is that a fair uh, term? Um, when asked, did he like the draft pick, he said, I love him. Uh, that was not typical of Chuck Knoll. Did, did that feel like you were wanted right away? Well, I mean, I didn't, I didn't read the articles. I mean, I did hear the stories. Um, you know, I never talked to the Steelers leading up to the draft. Uh, we never had one conversation. Um, I talked to all the other teams in the, like, top 15. Uh, but the Steelers, we never had that conversation. Um, but when I got picked, when I got the phone call when I was sitting at home on Jefferson Avenue in Fort Wayne, Indiana with the family, um, I was like, absolutely. And then, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm thinking in my head, these guys got – they were pretty good, you know, but you know, I'm thinking the steel curtain. And then, you know, when I got here meeting, you know, Mean Joe Green was our defensive line coach. So meeting Mean Joe, um, kind of iconic, right? Donnie Shell was still on the team. Uh, Stallworth was still on the team. And so me, seeing those guys on TV, winning Super Bowls, you know, previous years, uh, then having the iconic Chuck Knoll as the head coach. Uh, it, it was so surreal being a country boy from Indiana, this point, I started playing football because my two older brothers played football and ended up playing in a 17 year career starting with Pittsburgh. I remember um, there was a game that you played in Arizona uh, and you returned to kickoff for a touchdown. I think it was like 190 degrees on the field uh, that day. Uh, so many plays that you made stand out. Is there one particular play or game that stands out in your mind in your career here? Well, there's two. Um, my first interception for a touchdown against Cincy, against Boomer, and our uh, wild card game against the Houston Oilers when I made calls a fumble 
against White. When he came, he, he busted out, came to the right side. I was the right corner, came up, made the uh, hit, ball came out. I'm looking down, the ball's right there. Like, what the heck? I pick it up. Uh, and then, you know, Gary comes out a couple plays later and kicks a winning field goal. So those two plays, um, I do remember quite well, like they were yesterday. 95, of course, was difficult. You're injured in the first game, but they kept you active so you could play in the Super Bowl against Dallas. Uh, how memorable was that to be with the team, uh, even though it ended up in a defeat, to be able to play after all you'd been through after tearing your ACL? Yeah, well, I mean, if you really think about it, and and I've I've, you know, talked to Bill, in uh, other moments, and I'm like, you know what, he's probably the only coach, out of all the 32 teams, that would have allowed me to stay on the active roster. He really is. The rest of them, I would have been on IR. And you know, he he listened to my argument. I did make an argument that I'm like, oh, okay, you know, we're sitting there talking to the doctor and the doctor's like, okay, it's gonna be four to six months. I'm like, ooh, four, one, two, three, four. Oh, that's, I mean, that's like January, it's playoff time. I can get back, coach. He was like, get the heck out. I'm like, coach, I can get back from, I, four months, I'll be back. And he listened. Uh, luckily for us and for me, we had Carnell Lake, right? Who was a, I mean, he's so underrated as an athlete who played outside linebacker at UCLA, comes in, plays strong safety, and then he moved to corner that year. And if he wouldn't have moved to corner and played as well as he had, and if anybody else would have got hurt in the secondary, then I would have had to go on IR, so make a roster spot move where they can bring somebody in. But Carnell played so well, and nobody else got hurt. So, you know, Bill, and I, I tell him all the time, thank you. I mean, that was my first Super Bowl appearance. Never knowing as an athlete when you're gonna go again, as a football team, right? You just never know. Uh, so, you know, if Bill wouldn't have listened, and um, you know, that's one thing he was really fair with, with all of us, that he always listened to our voices. Our voices mattered as athletes. Um, and if it wasn't, I wouldn't have played in 95. And Carnell made the Pro Bowl as a corner. That's right. And that's why we were <laughs> delighted to uh, induct him into the Steelers Hall of Honor this year. Rod, I can't imagine there's a greater thrill off the field than being inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame in Canton. But I'm wondering how you felt seeing Bill Cower, Donnie Schell being inducted. Is it kind of like a dad who's proud of his kid, um, you know, going in? Did, did you get that same feeling of pride? Yeah, I, I knew Bill was gonna go in eventually. Um, I knew he had to wait, you know, there's so many other coaches who had multiple Super Bowl wins that are still waiting, right? I knew he. I knew he was going to get in. Donnie, when I, you know, I saw Donnie on the list, and I'm like, that was my roommate, my rookie year, and I'm like, I had to go back, and I looked at his numbers, and I'm like, oh my gosh, this dude had 50 some picks. I didn't know that. And, you know, I knew he was good. I mean, he had. He used to do this one move. He used to hit, like he would be outside shade. He would have his outside shoulder free, and he would hit the offensive lineman or running back coming in, and he would spin back inside and make the tackle. The first time I did I was like, what the, f what, what? <laughs> like, who does that? I mean, and he did, he did it so natural. You know, then that's when I started really going back and remembering everything that uh, he did. But then I remember all the conversations that he had with me as being a good athlete, being a pro's pro, being mature on and off the field. I mean, he was really, he really helped me as an athlete to keep my head straight and not to think I'm bigger than what I am. Um, and I was so happy to see him going because he's a great human being. He absolutely is. And uh, that was an all Steeler affair, if you will, in, in Canton um, th this past summer. Uh, you know, you talked about transitions and about Carnell moving from safety to corner. You made the opposite switch. Do you feel that playing safety prolonged your career? It did well. You got to remember, I played safety my whole life. So from nine years old, Pal Raiders, all the way up through high school, all the way through Purdue. My last year at Purdue, they did move me to the corner for half the, about half the year. Uh, but my safety was my natural spot. Then I ran my 40 at the combine. And I'm like, shoot, but I think they're going to play you at corner. <laughs> I'm like, what? Like, I don't want to play corner. Like, I, I'm not a corner. 
And I mean, the first, the one of the main reasons I used to get beat so often when I was younger, I played like a safety. I played with my eyes in the backfield and you can't do that as a corner. So playing on the, playing on the side view, that's what I like to call it. Then, then from top down, you know, safety, you're always playing top down. You get to see the all 22 look. Where a corner, you're playing side view. And I had to learn how to play out there. And then, you know, probably 10 years, 12 years into my career, I'm like, you know, I kept asking wherever I was at, like, I can play safety. I mean, that's what I do. That's who I, that's who I really am inside of me. I'm really a safety, playing corner. I just can run. And they allowed me to play. And then when the move, when I did move to safety, playing corner and nickel really helped. Because now, I mean, corner, every, every spot on the defense is really an X, right? So it helped me kind of understand what a defense is, where the players are going to be, where's the weakness of the defense. And, you know, I got to play another five years uh, with it. And that was, it was fun. I, I, I wish I would have played 17 years at safety because it was so much easier. They couldn't take you out of the game like they can throw to the other side of the field at corner. Well, they can't do that at safety. So that was, it was fun. So it, yes, it definitely, long answer, yes, it definitely helped me prolong my career. You went into the Pro Football Hall of Fame as a Steeler. I think everybody realized that's the right fit, but you did play for other organizations. Um, you won a Super Bowl with a team who shall remain nameless, uh, in Pittsburgh anyway. <laughs> Um, but I'm, I'm wondering, um, you've played in four different organizations, maybe provincially, Pittsburghers, Steeler fans everywhere like to think that there's something special and different about the Steeler organization, um, from the chief to Dan, now to Art, just the Rooney organization, the way they do things. And I wonder having experience with other three other organizations, is that true? that the Steelers just, there's a different feel about playing for them. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, I played for really honestly four iconic owners. You know, when you talk about the Rooney family, and I'm talking about all the Rooneys, right? Not just the one, all the Rooneys. But the difference of the Steelers is that, first of all, I think it was like, it was meant to be that I came to play for the Steelers. My high school team colors was the same as the Steelers. Our uniforms were the exact same match as the Pittsburgh Steelers. My hometown was called Fort Wayne, we have three rivers that run through it. So we have the Three Rivers Festival every single year. We have three rivers here. I didn't know that. I didn't know how a river started in Pennsylvania. I, mean, I don't think anybody <laughs> knows that. I mean, that's a great trivia question. Um, but it was just a part of who I am, Purdue, old black and gold. You know, I, I wore black and gold for 18 years of my life. So it's really who I am. But then you know, meeting the chief and seeing how they treat you, how they, it's really about family. And really, honestly, a lot of the old school owners were all like that. Uh, so I was, I'm really, I'm glad I played in the era I played in um, and played for the Steelers. Um, being around Mel Blunt, you know, got, get, getting to go to his farm and see what he does with the kids out there. How great an influence that all the older Steelers who come back into the locker room and give back to the current Steelers on a yearly basis. I mean, it's, it's something you don't see everywhere. You just don't. I mean, I did go to other four other iconic teams and four iconic owners, but they didn't, that didn't happen on a daily like it does in Pittsburgh. And that standard is a standard. That's what, that's, that's what you have to love. The standard to standard in the front office, on the playing field, in the locker room, being a Steeler, uh, that's the difference between the Pittsburgh Steelers and I think the rest of the teams that I played for. And lastly, Rod, in conjunction with that, coming from where you come from, uh, working class family, did you always feel like you and the Steelers fit the personality and the persona of Western Pennsylvania? Oh yeah, I'm blue collar. My dad's blue collar. My dad worked for International Harvester, you know, back in the day. Um, I'm a hard hat guy. My first job of uh, working uh, in high school was working construction. I mean, that's, that's not a blue collar. I don't know what is. I mean, breaking concrete with our with a sledgehammer. Uh, they would not give us a jackhammer because we were too young. So they're like, <laughs> but you can sling that sledgehammer. Go, go. We need to crack those five slates right there on the sidewalk. And we did it. Um, it's a part of who I am. I mean, and, and Chuck Noll let us know, if you don't tackle, you ain't playing. So I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm going to tackle. We play tackle football on the streets in Fort Wayne. 
I mean, me and my brothers, I got, I got face driven into the snow quite often when I was young. So tackle football for me is a part of, part of life. Uh, getting your hands dirty is a part of life. Uh, so yeah, it was a, I think it was a match made in heaven.